Game nine of the Basketball Africa League is going to be mega hot as West African neighbours Senegal and Mali front up here in Dakar as AS to Ango in search of their first win in the Sahara Conference, locking horns with Stad Malian, who are fresh from their victory over the Kwara Falcons. Mabidou Gay, AS Tuan, and of course, uh, Kaba Kante, Stad Malian. Here are the starting five for AS Tuan. Over to you, Asha. Just looking at uh, the starting five, you have one change, Samba Fall, who's replaced Tarell Stoglin. Otherwise, the other four are the same start. Malie, same starting five. Nothing has changed, Robbie. Makan Keita, Mamadou Keita, Aliou Diara, Suleiman Belt, and John Wilkins do not change a team that's winning, Robbie. That's what that man, Kabak Conte, is looking at tonight. Well, let's take a look at this then. Coach K, they call him, he likes his rice. Golden State Warriors, his favorite team and he would love to visit Zimbabwe. Uh, they have Cabacante, the man who is focused. He's on a mission. Opposite him, Mamadou Gay. Oh, there he is. He's uh, coaching this AS Duan team. It's the home team here in Senegal, and they are very much focused on trying to get themselves that win. They lost against Reg, 69-55. That was after the opening encounter, 70-76. This is where we stand. Uh, Reg with three from three. They're qualified for Kigali. The ABC fighters in the second position there. They just managed to beat US Monesty in 1974 to move above them. Stad Mali in a fourth uh, with two wins and one win, of course. And uh, that win against Quara Falcons obviously has lifted them up into that position. Quara Falcons down there without a win, AS Tuan without a win, but they played a game less. AS Tuan need to hit back. Tonight's the night, as uh, we heard from Cabacante, and they are very keen to get themselves into the driving seat with a victory tonight. But they'll come up against Stad Malian, who will be very keen to try and work their magic as well. Uh, Stad Malian go again tomorrow against Reg. Quara Falcons also uh, up against AS Duan, who go again for their fourth encounter. So here we are, and uh, just moments away from tip-off. Big battle, neighbors, of course, between uh, uh, Senegal and Mali. They know each other extremely well, Afro basket, local competitions, of course. Uh, Usher, um, I mean, this is this is such an important ma uh, game for AS Duan. Yeah, talking about uh, AS Duan and how they've fared so far in this tournament, they need this one. It is a win. It is a must-win game for them. It is a derby, even though some of uh, the players are saying it's just an ordinary game, but they need to deliver. Their fans have come out in big numbers. There's really the best of the best on the court, and you can see Stephanie Baxdale, the crew chief of this refereeing trial tonight, has a lot of experience in the NBA G League that she brings to the BAL. It is her second season there, and it's going to be a huge fixture tonight, Robbie. Yeah, and I think the news that everybody's talking about is the fact that uh, Terrell Stoglin, uh, not in the starting five. There you go, there is one of the key players, Aliou Diara, uh, his nickname, Aliou. <laughs> he loves chicken, loves to go to Egypt, and he likes Anthony Davis. So you can understand that, you know, he's, uh, he, he, he's got big ambitions to replicate exactly what Davis does in the NBA. Uh, Chris Crawford in this squad, no Terrell Stoglin. Terrell Stoglin, zero points in game two. A bit of a surprise to not have him in. Well coach has got to make his decisions and uh, Mamadou Gay you know he's a serious coach and he knows exactly what he's trying to do and he's trying to put together a team that can win yes absolutely when you talk about uh, Mamadou Gay he has a lot on his plate tonight he's done the talking it's now time to play and see if the players can deliver on the court it's a big night not just for S1 but also for Senegalese basketball uh, Q, let's go and um, catch up with Q. Uh, we haven't even introduced him properly yet. Q, uh, what do you make of this? What do you make of this? Uh, uh, the AS2 team without Terrell Stoglin. There's a lot of pressure on this AS2 team. They need to start well. They need to do a little better than they have in their past two encounters. And this is going to be tough. Stakmanian have made an impression in this conference. Let's see what they have to offer. Chris Crawford in the starting five, and uh, the ball has been picked up here by AS Duan. They start off, uh, they're playing in white against uh, uh, Stad Malian, playing in black. And Fal getting the ball out into the hands of Al-Khalian Dor. 
they'll have a lot of hope support for every phase of attacking play and uh, a good defensive play anything that happens in fact that's positive for this as to one team there'll be a lot of noise wilkins getting himself into trouble there yes looking at that replay very aggressive in that paint and that's what you need that's how barandiai has decided to start this game with energy with precision let's see if he can deliver from the charity line and there is john wilkins uh, the american who has picked up a foul within the first 17 seconds his father used to play for utah jazz six seasons playing for the jazz in the nba jeff oh that's the, there's the eruption from the the seats inside of this dakar arena and a good rebound, well done, perfect stuff. And a decent uh, defensive rebound as well, working very hard. Baron die, and there's the layup. Doesn't fall, can't get it up. And out of the thicket, Chris Crawford calls to try and get support from Ocherubia. Chirobia, who scored that basket earlier. Just a hanging jump shot from Ali Odiara. He all want to have his uh, scoring and hot hands today up against this AS20. There's a lot at stake in this encounter, Russia. Yes, you talk about uh, a lot of stake in it. You can see the tension on the faces of the players. They're trying to settle into this fixture. There's noise from the crowd. Could be motivation for AS1 or for Stad Malier, for that matter, to just step up and see how they can approach this game. Makan Keita with a beautiful pair of points there to get Stad Malian. The first points on the scoreboard, Crawford. That is perfect from uh, the Stad Malier captain. Makan That's nicely done, beautifully done work from Baran Dai. Great pass, great vision to, to find him in that little pocket of space in the paint. You can see what it means to him and the S1 bench celebrating it. And... Long range three pointer, how about that? Absolutely stunning effort coming in from Mamadou Keita. Those players that are very key for the Mali national team and it's bringing that experience here to the BAL. Akali, Akali and Joe could quite keep uh, the ball in his hands, which is a little bit problematic there. Uh, Ocherubia, Nigerian. And back in the hands of Stad Malian, who will go again. We'll square up five points apiece. And Diana Chiriobia with the points. Long range effort coming in once again from that man, Mamadou Keita. Keita can't sink the triple. Crawford, Crawford with a mid range two. And the rebound, defensive rebound, solid from Ali Udiara. Standout player in their last encounter for Stad Malian. Long range shot coming in for Wilkins. Off the metal, made safe by Ochirubia. You just see that uh, both teams are just trying to see what they can amount to behind the arc. Well, that was stunning play, wasn't it? Just dropping it, kind of a showing, and then a sneaky little pass into the hands of Ndai, who makes sure that those points go up on the scoreboard. And talking about Ndai, that's five points for the youngster. He's really cruising in this game so far. Uh, just lost possession there, Suleiman Berte. Uh, we're actually really pleased to see him. As we see the uh, the replay there, wonderful score. Excellent stuff there from Corbett. We thought he was going to go for a floater over the top, just dropped it in the hands of a die who went for the pair. Uh, but they've given possession back to A.S. Duane. Well, seeing what Chris Crawford brings to this A.S. Duane side is exactly that. Good eyes in the paint and very aggressive on, on offense. There is the American. It's a very casual way of scoring two points. Uh, no one really in his face. Just uh, softly flew off his fingers and into his final destination. Bertie, he's got a bit of 
You can see he's got the tape on that left shoulder, which is the injury that we were a bit concerned about. If he can get his scoring uh, scoring target found tonight, then they're in trouble, of course. Uh, Stamalia, beautiful score from Crawford. He enjoyed that little moment, so we're going to go and catch up with Q on the on the side, on the other side of the court. Q, uh, getting a little bit of a reaction from what's going on. What do you What are your thoughts so far? Well, so far, we've seen what can happen when the leading scorer is no longer on the floor. Beautiful play so far from Crawford. He's got to be the primary playmaker. Is their go-to guy. He'll either pass the ball or he'll take the primary shot. But he's been doing good work on the floor for AS Duan. Yeah, just uh, making that pass into the into the pocket with a day, just taking the pass there and then scoring himself, uh, really standing out from the crowd. Uh, he gives him a chance to uh, literally sort of you know stretch his wings a little bit and see what he's see what he can do as being the top boy. Absolutely, 12-5. Well, Rob, you have to feel the enthusiasm from the S1 players. They're feeling a good vibe. The fans are bringing that energy, and the players are li literally taking that into the game, and they're feeling comfortable with that need. Just manages all this uh, poor pass that is, and they've given the ball, and that is a nice layup, beautifully done. You can see that AS Duan taking full advantage. Uh, Sam Lafal, standout player in uh, in the run-up to qualification. And look, the fans are out of their seats. We're going to take a break. 14-5, AS Duan lead. Yeah, welcome back to the Dakar Arena. 14 points to 5, AS Duan. Leading Stad Malian and Chris Crawford putting some points on the scoreboard. Like last game, 15, this game, 5. Field goals, 50% this game. Assist, it's early doors. Don't get me wrong, five minutes in. But, you know, it's already looking pretty good, friend. Absolutely. He is one for one behind the air. And that sort of you know, transition and great, you know, energy that he's bringing in this game is what will be very key for S. Granis. And that is a turnover steal. They got hold of it. Can they find the back of the net? It goes up again, again, again. <laughs> Honestly, it was like netball at one point, quite crazy stuff. Um, unable to sink it. Near the pisser is nearly paying off, but just look at that, a little bit too hard off the boards. There's another chance, three attempts, and then a scramble, and then it goes out of play. But they still have. No, nope, they're gonna. It's uh, in fact Stad Mali will get possession. Um, let's go across and catch up with uh, Q. I'm gonna say Nanga Nangadev. <laughs> I'm gonna speak Wolof with you. Or Palibu Francais. Or how, how's it going? Well, Mangadev right back, uh, Robbie. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say this: is that the noise quotient in here has increased dramatically. The home fans are getting involved in it, and it certainly is a fact that I'm not sure how much Stan Malian could hear in that last time out, but they have uh, some work to do, and their two primary scorers haven't gotten on the score sheet yet. Yeah, Diara Bete, of course. Um, uh, Paré just there scoring uh, points, and that is beautifully done. Look, they, they're, they're on a mission. Didn't go in that time, didn't happen, but they've just managed a beautiful pass into the path of Paré. That's two baskets in the space of less than a minute pretty impressive well that is impressive from Pare coming off the bench and creating such impact is what you need and coach Cabacante must be very pleased with Pare points in the paint eight and six AS Tuana dispossessed Stad Malian picking up possession now they got a chance Berte Berte for Diara oh my word Ali Smash it in big time. Well, that's uh, a display of bromance that we saw in the last game, especially between Ali Diara and Suleiman Belt. I'm a big believer in uh, telepathic messages, as we, uh, you know, discussed in the uh, recent <laughs> game. Uh, they must have heard us. Well, heard you, Q. Kater, uh, Kater over the top. Oh, it's a big three-pointer for Kater. We're all square at 14 all. Incredible finish there from Keita. It's his second three-pointer in this game. He's bringing that experience into this game from the national team. He's also had a great impact on the team in winning the league back home in Mali. And that is just beautiful. Poetry in motion. Poetry in motion. Stunning basketball here for Stad Malian. And AS Tuan 
obviously a bit concerned about that. They've just thrown away a five, six point lead, and now they find themselves all square. Level with Stad Malia, neighbors. Mamadou Gay is calling the timeout. We'll hear from Q in a couple of moments' time, but I think that uh, more importantly, I think we can say that uh, Stad Malian are not here just to make up the numbers. They got that win against Quara Falcons. Uh, they came up a bit short against US Monastery, but they went too far behind. Fine fourth quarter that saw the battle back to lose by 10, but uh, a very uh, fine performance. Let's have a look at some of the uh, the top stats, Usher. We're looking at uh, Marcus Crawford with five points so far alongside Baranjai, Samba Fal starting for the first time in the Sahara Conference with two points, Osharoiba as well on the scoreboard for Stad Malier, Mamadou Keita with six points, Pare off the bench with four, Makan Keita and Ali Diara with two each, but it's really impressive to see the rebounds also of uh, Ali Diara, three on the board, he's always fighting on the other side of uh, the court, just trying to make sure that they maintain the momentum and just stay with S1, and who knows, they could take the lead. You just never know, do you? Here is Samafal into the hands of Ventura. Crawford at wide three, a three. It doesn't. And they, they just, the ball goes back into the hands of Stad Malian. And let's just have a look at this again. Look, it's, uh, I think it's Ocherobia who's just hugging Diara a little bit too tightly. So the make way and a couple of changes uh, for AS Tuana. Uh, talking about uh, the changes for AS Duan, in comes that man, Kaman Malwatch. Superstar young player from the NBA Africa Academy, part of the BAL Elevate program. And the ball flung out wide, Keita for a big long range shot, it just nearly falls. And there he is, Malwatch just making it safe. Crawford around the outside trying to go himself. That is sumptuous, sumptuous play from Crawford. And a fine two points there just to push them ahead once again. Well, Crawford is a man who started this game with good attitude. He has five points so far in the game. And the energy, the precision, but also really the urge to just attack the paint just adds so much to this AS1 side. Top scorer for AS1 for the time being. That's a nice turn, beautifully done, and the put in there by Tiara, showing us what he's capable of doing. We were very, very impressed by his full range of skills, uh, Tiara, that he definitely has the full set of skills and he can cover himself offensively and defensively. I'm talking about uh, defensively, he's the leading rebounds speaker in this tournament so far, 14 rebounds per game at you, Tiara. Keita, Keita, it's all opening up for Keita. Oh, look at that block from Malawash. As per usual, we wouldn't expect anything else. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I thought that was going to be something special from Malawash, but he couldn't get his hands on it, couldn't connect. He had his eyes on the ball, Malawash. He's such a good energy teenager. And looking at the other side of the court, Malawash, with that access denied block, to deny Mama Duqueta. We got Ruben Chomche, who's also the uh, the, the elevate player, who's gonna, who's on the other side, who will be coming on it, and he's an incredible talent too. One thirty-nine left on the clock. Q, what are your thoughts so far? It's an interesting battle between the two neighbors. Been very, very interesting, and what? The focus was from Coach Papi as he wants AS1 to attack the rim a little bit more and stop settling for outside shots. We've seen a couple from Chris Paul, but he probably has license, but the rest is put the put the ball in the on the floor and attack the paint. Well, you can see there just uh, the charge coming through from Tamajan Karnati. And he'll go to the free throw line. Well, looking at uh, the last one minute of this first quarter, you just get the feeling that both coaches have some players off the bench to give the starters a bit of rest. It's been a high intense intensity game so far.
possession back in the hands of the local team, AS Tuan. Itching to get that first, re first result, this first win here. Mamadou Gay underlining the importance of this one. Here's Boissy, Boissy looking very strong. 14 points against Reg and a real live wire. That might, they might get possession, that's really, really smart play from Mamadou Diop. Just flicking the ball back into the, uh, the Stad Malian player so that they get possession back. We're looking at that replay there, Mamadou Diop. Very smart decision that he made there to maintain the possession for the Senegalese champions. That's a long-range shot coming in. Oh, that was, wasn't far off either. That's been knocked out of bounds. I think they'll get possession again, AS Tuan. Yes, they do. So back to 14 seconds, of course, as we see a, a change for Stad Malian. And off goes Suleiman Berte. He's got that injury on that shoulder, seems to be okay. And Sistruma coming on to replace him. Very calmly done, swinging the ball around. And back out for Crawford, Crawford, Crawford! It's a beautiful score. Three points down in the corner. It is ten points for Crawford, first player in this game to go to double digits. It's been impressive so far for Estuan and the leader that they expect from a player of his experience, Rob. Well, you've got to step it up. You've got to step it up. You've got to put yourself into, you know, the, the zone and say, OK, we've had to make adjustments. This is my chance. I've got to shine. And talking about shining, that's his second three-pointer, Chris Crawford. Looking good on offense and also on defense. Yeah, he's holding Konate and he steals the ball. Beautifully done. Sure, it's going to go down. That is a fine layup. And Boasi finishes off a good steal there from Crawford. It's great teamwork from uh, the two guards because when you score from transition, it's easy points. It's like the points are literally there for you for the taking. On a, on a plate, free for all. Crawford's the man, it's 21-17, we're gonna take a break. Yeah, welcome back to the Dakar Arena, 21-17. Uh, a very interesting tussle, a battle between AS2 and Stad Malian, and we're about to get this second quarter going. And uh, we've got that man, Kelvin Amayo, with the ball in it. About to get the ball in his hands and uh, and get this show started once again. Here he is, first minutes on court for the Nigerian. Kanate, Diara, Diara waits for a little bit of support. Kanate comes back just on the outside of the D. And they get the ball back, so it's back to 14. A little bit of lost possession. Crawford doing some great defensive play there. And uh, looks like... They're going to get possession if they can settle this. Q, uh, sorry, uh, Asha, what do you get on this? Yes, when you look at uh, the call made by Claudio, the referee, it is Stad Malien's ball. Looks like it came off Chris Crawford. Yeah, it was a close call, but uh, it's the right call. Crawford, Malawash, Boissy, Diop, and Brian Ose, who's coming on. Matthew Bryan, a manning, Jose. Into the hands. And taken around. And a chance for them to try and drop a three-pointer in. Diara, no. Nope. And it gives a chance to go over to QQ. Um, practicing linguistic skills again. Um, picking up you know, all of the bits of information, the details, what's happening uh, from that timeout. My, my linguistic skills tell me that the crowd is going to be very important in this one. So you've got to keep them at bay, Stad Malian. And the only way they can do that is by playing great basketball. One stat that I must bring to your attention is the seven offensive rebounds from AS to one. They're flipping the script a little bit against the team that's a great rebounding team. Rebounds are key. I think we saw that with ABC Fighters and their victory over US Monastir earlier on. Um, 
I think that was the biggest loss for US Monastir uh, in the last two seasons, 90 points to 74. Uh, they got beaten by Liz Mills, Ivorian fighters. Rebounds being very important indeed. So, how do you deal with that? Well, Estuan taking the lead, but you can see that Stan Marlian are playing a smart game as well. Offensively, making sure that they're present. The, the offensive rebounds go in their way. They get the ball back in their hands. Rolls, but it doesn't drop. Malawash makes it safe. Taken forward by Boisi. Chris Crawford still on the floor. Kamaneng. Nice little turn. That's a beautiful score. Beautifully dropped in there by Matthew Brian Amaning. Well, Brian Amaning, one who is the first Ghanaian to play in the Basketball Africa League, makes history on that front as we still are yet to see a Ghanaian team competing at this tournament, trying to make a name for himself, Amaning. Yeah, he actually played alongside Isaiah Thomas, uh, Washington Husky, so he's, uh, he knows a little bit about uh, playing with the big boys. We know what Thomas went on to do, but uh, it's great to have representatives from all nations across the continent coming here and doing and playing and making, showing some of the, the girls and the boys and everybody across the continent around the world how to do it. Absolutely. A mining who, whose mother is in the stands supporting the sun, traveling all the way from the UK. It's just uh, some commitment, you'd say, Rob. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, absolutely. He fell in love with basketball at the age of four, and he's traveled the world as well, played in Mexico, France, Serbia, Argentina, and in England with, for the Cheshire Phoenix. He's in the starting five in their opening encounter getting a chance to score some big points. Here he goes again. He's uh, a live wire, isn't he? When you watch him do his jaunt and, and race into the D. That's a long-range shot coming in from Crawford once again. Comes back out to Boisi. Carmen kicks down. Back to 14, the shot clock. Here's Boisi. Turns his man. Gets the ball out wide. It's a chance for Amaning. Amaning. Oh! Well, Brilliant stuff uh, from Aman, Mamadou Diop. Mamadou Diop, obviously one of the experienced players for S1. He's helped the side win National League titles. And he's been on the bench for the two games earlier, but today he seems like he'll have uh, more involvement than we've seen in the Sahara Conference this year. He's busy again. Look at that, there's a steal into the hands of Amanik. Crawford picks it up, slows it down, calms it down. 7.22 left in this first half. Amaning. It's a bit shot there from Amaning, and there's no one to rebound in the paint as Stad Malier picked the possession. And a chance for Ruben Chokche to come on. And at the other end, look what they're doing. It's another fine score. Mamadou Diop. Um, showing us what he's capable of doing. That's a fine pair of points there. 27-18, all of a sudden, there's a burst of acceleration, burst of adrenaline, and look at the reaction here. Get the fans going, of course you should. Yes, absolutely. Picked up that ball, easy there up on the board to make it four points for him coming off the bench. That's what you need, especially for Coach Papi, his nickname, the coach of S1. Yeah, um, Q, I just want to ask you, I think there's some stars that are about to be born in this AS21 team because they're playing second fiddle, but as soon as they get a chance to come out and shine, you know, we're getting the likes of Berti and Diara who are leading away, but behind them, I get the impression some of the youngsters are coming through and saying, I want to do this too. They've been the primary scorers. You, you have to figure that they, they will be scouted. So someone else has got to pick up the scoring drop for the scoring for the Stad Malian team. And now, under a little bit of pressure, we will have to find some additional answers. They've, they've been very well defended throughout this first half and a bit. 
27, 18, 6, 40 left in this first half. Berti will get his hands on the ball. And uh, Cavacante watches on it. And there's another steal. Look at this. He's off again. Alouas trying to keep the ball in play. Very frustrated that that didn't lead to anything. But look what Boissy does. Race is over. The hand, the pull up. That basically tells you that this is a team who are working well together. Very frustrating there for Malouac, who's been improving day by day. He's under incredible program with the NBA Africa Academy in Sali, not so far from here, Rob. Yeah, that's where they went and they, they, they trained with. They, uh, they stayed down there as to act for a couple of weeks to get themselves into the right frame of mind and into the right physical state. They're charging up court once again. Keita, Berti, Diara. Diara, number of turnovers, four to eight, twice as many, and another score. Diara is the man doing the damage. That was a bit of a careless pass from Malwatch to Crawford, but he got it back. But great sense of defense from Suleiman Berta. But the thing is, the points from turnovers haven't been good because he has to have six and uh, Stad Malian five. So despite the fact that they've won those turnovers, they haven't managed to translate into points, which is a problem, Q. It has been a problem. And if you keep watching the matchups and the way that the, the coaches are trying to make adjustments, you see Chris Crawford going to be given his first break. One of the points of emphasis when they came out of the timeout was the pick and roll and the isolation for Brian O'Manning. He's got a couple of touches, but hasn't converted, so now they've got to redirect their offensive uh, intent to AS1. Fair take. There's an uh, offensive foul there from Berti, just, just driving into a Manning who's holding forward. Looking at uh, that replay there, it seems that the foul was called on Pare. Yeah, it's a good call there. Thank you, Asha. And Oash dropped into the hands of Amani. Tries to turn. And a little bit of frustration there, as you can see. Mohamed Barry claims that it should have been theirs, but it's not. He commits the foul. And that will be his second foul. Yeah, it's definitely is a worry for the Stad Malier coach, Kabakante, two fouls in less than one minute. Problematic. Here's Twan. Under a little bit of pressure here in the corner, Boisi. And uh, he commits the foul, Keita. Boisi's really interesting, isn't he? He's got great control. And a very fast dribbler. They'll get possession. Another foul. Three fouls in the space of a couple of minutes. Cater picks it up. Macken, Cater. Uh, Wasi brings good energy in this team, especially when replacing Alkali Dur, who's the starting point guard of S1. So that's what you need. Someone who's good on defense, good on offense, and has good control of of the ball. Talking control didn't have much there. It was lost uh, and Stad Malian pick it up down into the corner. Uh, there's a traveling call there and a little slip up on the ideal scenario from Sumala Susuma. We're going to take a break. It's a seven point lead for AS Tuan here against Stad Malian in Dakar. We'll be back. Yeah, welcome back to the Dakar Arena. We are in for a very interesting tussle, and there we can see the under-20 African champions of Senegal, of course. Um, it's been an incredible year for Senegalese football. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, winning everything available in football, the Africa Cup of Nations, the African Nations Championship, which is the Chan, the under-20, the beach soccer. Wow. Yeah, absolutely everything. Uh, maybe a maybe a FIFA World Cup in the future. Yep, you, who knows? Who Mar knows? Mar Why not? Morocco made it to the semis in Qatar. Yes. Off the metal it comes, tidied up, taken forward. Berthe's back on the core. Look at that for an aggressive charge. And the ball just stolen. 
somehow out of his hands. We can look at uh, the defense there from Stade Malier. They're trying to raise the energy here and keep up with Air Strand, but obviously Chris Crawford not having it. And it's three personal fouls for Mohamed Pare. Danger. That reads like danger for Stade Malien. Yeah, definitely. You know, 429 left before the end of the first half. I think that's uh, that's a bit scary, isn't it? Yes, it is. And you can see a substitution there with uh, Chinelu Ruben replacing Pare. Boissy. Long range shot, big long range shot coming in from Boissy to say that doesn't fall. And with 27 20, Berté with a long range shot goes the other side of the ring, picked up. Crawford, Crawford looks for someone and he has it. That's a very nice piece of play. And it's unfortunate that it didn't fall because Malawash would have enjoyed that little moment. Uh, Q, let's catch up with Q. Let's find out what's going on with Q. Q. What have you got for us? Well, if you have a look on Ruben Chinello's right eye, he's got a, a, a little bit of a covering, and, and he had a, picked up a cut, two stitches, but he's back in, and he's ready to play. So it's physical in there, and we're just getting a little sense of what's been going on inside the paint. Thank you, Q. And looking at uh, the replay there, Aliu Diara. Foul and basket, and he has an opportunity to make it a three-point play as Stad Malier try to fight for their lives here. It's a five-point game. And it is danger for Kaman Malwatch. Three personal fouls. This doesn't look good. Yeah, hence the reason why he's just uh, been replaced directly by Mohamedou Dianin. Three rebounds against Reg. Big guy. Good defensive game. Tiara from the free throw line. Successful. It's a four-point game here. And the battle between the neighbours of Senegal and Mali really reaching new levels. Keita just clashing there with Boissy who loses possession. Keita will pick up the foul and that will be Keita's first personal. We're looking at the replay there. Contact between Keita and Boissy. And Boissy has really played a huge role on the offensive side for S1. Some of the things he does, you can't even really see on the score sheet. But he brings good energy, he has good eyesight of the court, and good ball distribution. As Stephanie Baxdale, the referee, explains to Kate and we have royalty here with the Minister of Sports of Senegal, Yankoba Diatara, having a word with the BAL president, Amadou Galofal, and right next to him, is the man himself, El Haji Diouf. Everyone remembers him for his exploits in the 2002 FIFA World Cup, where he took Senegal to the quarterfinals in a historic performance back then. And that came having beaten the, the reigning champions, France, from 1998 in their opening game. Memorable, magical. Magical indeed. Senegality. Senegality, regality. <laughs> <laughs> Fraternity. Absolutely. 28-25, and that was uh, more points for Stad Mali and there. They're battling hard, Crawford and Cody, to get this right. Wasi just pounces on that pass as he comes up against Bertie, tries to go around him, shot clock down to 10. Crawford out wide, drops it into the path of that man there, Samba foul, but he can't do anything with it. It's been picked up and a chance for Betty to try and launch a three-pointer. He's in trouble there and he loses possession. Boissy takes over. Need to come down a little bit, but that's a good opportunity. Crawford absolutely smashes it from long range out wide. 
His third three-pointer in this game. Crawford looking absolutely incredible. 13 points so far on the board in the second quarter. Just shows you how focused and how necessary it is for Crawford to play well for this S1 team to have a chance of winning this game. You're absolutely right, and you know it's uh, you know players have got to step up. Uh, we mentioned Terrell Stoglin. Uh, he's he's not around. Now it's Crawford's chance to come up, fit him with the Senegalese players, fit him with the African players, uh, and, and try and find his path. And you know what? You know these players who do get the lucky chance to come and play in Africa at the BAL, who come from outside of the continent. They, they need to understand how to mix, fit in, play, perform in the way that we know that they can, but also become a team member. Absolutely. Obviously, Crawford coming in with experience from playing with Slack of Guinea last year and playing for the Patriots of Rwanda in the playoff finals last year. And just getting used to playing on the continent, it's not necessarily the same style in the two other countries, but it's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Crawford, Samba foul. And Dior, a long range shot. Goes for it down this side. Ball gets knocked out, they'll get possession back. <laughs> 2 13 left in the second quarter. Manning. Manning just uh, waiting for foul. Down in the corner. Tries to find his way. He's up against uh, a very busy chop who gets in his way in a big way. Um, that's what he does. He gets in your face, makes life extremely difficult. It is actually that good defense from uh, Stade Malier. They've been putting a lot of pressure on the ball, Robbie. And that's sort of what they want to achieve, get the ball without the foul. And so far, it's working for them. Yeah, he's got to the, to the bench there. But uh, making life difficult for your the offensive players, that's what Q used to do. Q. You give me way too much credit, but you know what? I could play the game. It's I... a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Q, we have your highlights on YouTube. You can't deny this. <laughs> yeah. How long are they? <laughs> oh no, he's gonna go and answer that. <laughs> Gotta check the VHS to see. <laughs> For everybody who wants to know a little bit more about, about Q, played for South Africa, played down in South Africa, played in Afro Baskets, played around Africa. Oh, that's a wonderful layup, look at that. And a fine score indeed coming in from Kelvin Omayo. Well, talking about Amaya, who brings good energy. Those are his first points in this game. And he'll be pleased with that, sort of get, give him confidence going into the defensive side. Two points, two points uh, with AS2 on it. In the lead still, trying to hold on until the last minute we go. Picked up by Andor. Andor on the outside of the arc. Tries to get rid of his man, goes on a drive. That's nicely done. Very slick. Read the situation very well, and a nice reaction from the bench of AS1. It's perfect from Al Kalindu, who replaced Boasi. Boasi was bringing that energy on the offensive side, and Dur just picks up from that and gets those two points on the board. One range shot coming in from Tiara. Does fall. Corfin picks up to endure. He's seen a gap. He's dropped it in. Oh, look at that for a block. He is outrageously good. Tiara just swats it away, and he keeps it in play, taken forward there by Amayo. <laughs> it's all happening tonight, isn't it? Wow. And that is going to be a foul, I think, going against Kelvin Amayo. 6.5 seconds remaining. Really interesting this game, end to end action, and looking at that replay as Chris Crawford denies access denied in that paint. 
no foul, of course, and that's the end of the half. How about that? Lots of entertainment. Crawford standing up and being counted. But a good uh, half there for AS2AM. They'll want to stay ahead. They'll want to keep on doing this. Crawford with 13 as AS2AM leads at Stad Malian 33-29. Estuan leading Stad Malian by four points. And uh, you can see that Tel Kelly and Dor coming back out. The guys just ready to roll, ready to get the ball bouncing once again because they want to get this this uh, this second, this third quarter going. They want to get themselves into this and start rolling again. Yes, when you look at uh, the attitude that they've been coming with to the third quarter, is something to build up on. And this today is the right moment to actually work on that. How they come back and how they react is what will be very key for them. We know that third quarters is very important in games of basketball, and whoever does well in this one it could play a huge role in the last quarter. Now listen, uh, you know, the, 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 the Senegalese champions, they deserve to be here. They managed to, to oust Duke in the finals, of course, to, to win the National and, uh, and claim that, that title. They come up against, you know, a very tricky team. They've got this man here, Aliou Diara. He's a wonderful player. He put in a fantastic performance in the last game, which was a win, 74-78 win against the Falcons. Uh, and just look at what he's um, achieved. Uh, not doing as well this time round, but there's still a lot of basketball to be played. Yes, there's a lot of basketball to be played. Aliou Diara, of course, s one scouted him. They know what he can do, but he has the capability to explode in the second half of this game and actually be a very key player for Stade Malier. But talking to him before the game, he said, this is a game like any other game. They'll be treating it, yes, like a final, and they know that they have to work together as a team. It's not really up to him, you know, just to score the points. It has to be team effort. So let's see how they can operate and make that happen. How do they make that happen? That's the big question. Q, do you have an answer for that? It's all about desire. I know it, it sounds really simple, but the coach's job is to channel that desire into execution on the floor. And right now, for Stad Malian, they have to do a better job of controlling the rebound. They have allowed 11 offensive rebounds from AS to 1. It's an area that they have dominated themselves. And that kind of narrative is a small adjustment that they can pick up on. And try and improve because AS2-1 are also playing for their lives in this one. Remember that in season one, AS2-1 only picked up one win in the Basketball Africa League in season one uh, against GSP. So they want to improve that record and for their home fans, they really want to try and get into the playoffs and the road to Kigali. And talking about obviously inspiration from the under 20 African champions who are here. They've brought the trophy you have the chan champions as well there's a lot of football class and football excellence in the building that s1 can get inspiration and motivation from ready to go ready to rock ready for the third quarter and there she is stephanie baxdale of the united states of america was with us in the bal last season and there's the uh there are the stitches just on the corner of the eye of uh, Shimalu. Yes, I'm talking about Stephanie Baxdale from upstate New York. She decided to come here while much madness is happening across the USA. It's the second time she's at the BAL. She brings that experience, obviously, from the NBA G League. She's been a FIBA referee from 2014 and is one of the superstars and one of the inspirational female referees across the world. Here we go. We're back in business here, third quarter, and duel. AS Duan leading by four, comes out wide. And a chance, and a chance for a big score down the left-hand side for a dive, but it doesn't happen. Racing down court to make sure that he's really close to Diara. And a long-range shot, this time from Stad Malian. Made safe. And out in the corner. And a high shot that goes over the top. Picked up by Kelvin Amayo. Here is Betty. Diara. 
that's uh, looked like it was a foul by Dai. Just stepped into Berti. We'll go to uh, there we go. Door Crawford foul Dai for Cheriobia. We just get the ball on the sidelines there. And looking at uh, the other side, Makan Keita, Amayo, Ali Diara, Berte, and Chinelu. Nicely done, Berte underneath the basket, just rises up, takes a really neat pass. The dangerous duo, the combination. And uh, oh, that's just uh, a little error because you can see that Keita gets a little tap in the face. Looking at uh, that replay, great finish from Suleiman Berte, who's been very key for Stade Malier in this tournament so far. But good eyes, good execution, and it's two points for Stade Malier. And they get possession back, so it's a two-point game. Here is Keita. Keita with a mid-range two. Back off the boards, made safe, picked up. Giniello. Back out to Keita. Keita goes on a bit of a wander. He likes to wander. And there's a foul that's committed, and I think that was Ocherubia. There you go, just that right, he's, that's that knee that just goes into Keita there as he tries to veer around it. Chin yellow, Berti. Here is Amayo, Amayo going over the top. Does it get his range? Diara, Diara off the boards, made safe. The rebound picked up by Ndai. Crawford. Mocherobia battles for the ball. He's got it in his hands. He shouldn't get... Well, it's going to be a jump ball there, but... Uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's Berte who will get possession. It's a uh, great attitude there from Aliu Diara to fight for the ball because each possession is very key in this game. A two-point game, Rob. 33-31, we always knew it was going to be tight between these neighbours as Berti tries to get the ball up to uh, Chinelo again. And a uh, rebound, the defensive, the, the offensive rebounds, very much a strong point for Stad Malian. And they're getting second, potentially third attempts at scoring the basket. Uh, Q, that must be a bit of a concern for, uh, for, uh, for coach uh, Papi Gay. It's definitely a concern. He's having a look now, and they, they are under control. They like the way they're playing the offense. Beautiful feed, an easy finish. Amayo getting execution. And that's just another example of how well controlled they've been out of the break. They managed to tie it up. But the concern is the, uh, the defensive game for AS Twan because they've thrown away their lead, and now they've thrown away possession. And this time, Crawford just allowing the ball to bounce away. Mayo into the hands of Akan Keita. Oh, he's dropped in, nicely done. Oh, it just comes off his feet. Yeah, it's uh, Stephanie Baxdale saying that it's going to be A.S. Tuan. Came off the feet of Chinello. And Chinello just owning up to Aliu Diara and saying it's his bad as they assemble back to play defense against A.S. Tuan. Crawford looking to uh, to skip through a bit of space, and of course uh, all of the all of the vines try and get him tangled up as he tries to to march through. Never that easy. It's never easy, especially when you have Amayo defending him. Cherubia. Well, again, it's just. Knocked out in it, they'll get possession back in their hands. But they're not scoring from their possessions, and that must be very concerning. It's really good hands there from Suleiman Berte to deny that easy pass. Long range shots, he gets pulls onto backside Crawford. A little bit scrappy, the plays. They're not scoring consistently from end to end. Uh, Q, it's a um, little bit un unnerving from both coaches' side, I imagine, seeing these uh, 
these plays not really being completed. Something's got to give, and that right now is the one that are in the penalty. They picked up the 15 foul, so that's going to continue with this team. They've got to keep their hands off the defense, and they've got to look to get an execution, and it's probably going to come courtesy of Crawford. They regain possession. Nicely done. Al Kelly into all. That's a good pass to Crawford. Crawford gets knocked over by Berte, and, uh, and Berte will pick up his first foul it is really been a very busy day for Chris Crawford and that could have been a great pass from Al Kalindur but there was Aliu Diara and Suleiman Berte in that pen <laughs> and looking at Al Kalindur he was trying to help Crawford get up and his lead as well. But there was teamwork. There was enough people to sustain the four of them. Crawford, 30 points, two rebounds, two assists. Chance to top it up a little bit from the free throw line. Gets the first one, top scorer. And in fact, it's quite surprising, isn't it? But uh, he's the only player in double figures so far. It's been a low scoring game and looking at uh, 5 of 15 on the free throw line, 33%. 33%. Berti. Under a little bit of pressure, that's really good work. That is excellent battling coming in from Samba Fal. And he tussles and he manages to make the steal. Just look at this. Perseverance pays off. Really got his grapple hooks on the ball and made sure it was his. El Kelly and Dior. It opens up. That's really nice. Charging from Barra and Die. He did it at the start of the first quarter. And then he goes on a one-man mission there and holds on using great strength. He's been knocking on that door, trying everything he can on the offensive end, and finally it pays off. On that front, it's seven points for Barandiai, and you can see that uh, it's a fourth team foul for Stade Manier. Yeah, and it was uh, Ali Diara who picked up that foul, that personal. Picked up by Macan Keita. Danger man in position. Kate is there. Waits for a little bit of support. He's got Kelvin. Kelvin Amayo outside. Goes for a long range three pointer. Off the metal. Shot clock down to zero. But there was contact and they will get possession back. A little bit fortunate there. Looking at uh, the replay. The ball touched the rim. And then afterwards, it was Michael Ocherobia who uh, got a fingertip to it. Chiniello, Chiniello, Chiniello. It's good defense there from uh, Marcus Crawford. He's doing so much on offense, on defense, and also being a leader. For S. Duane, he has more experience than most of the players on the court. Of course, with uh, Ocherodi as well, who's played in eight countries across the world in the USA, in Germany, in Spain, France, Romania, Italy, UK, and now Senegal. And you can see that experience on the court from Ocherodi. Shot clock down to zero, and that's too late. It won't count. So that was a beautiful effort. A wonderful long range big shot from downtown that even Q would be proud of. Very proud if it was done within the shot clock going off. Not the case. 5.25 and a five point lead. And these are the moments that really frustrate coaches when you give the ball back to your opponents, you know, just at a good time when you're, you're moving in the right direction. Very frustrating. Just have a look at this again. 
And that's very intense defense. It's three personal fouls for Acherovia. But you just got to be smart, you know, and, and he, these are the ones in, the, in no man's land. And then all of a sudden they get possession back, hustling Berte on that occasion. Talk about hassling, it is a timeout for Kabakante. I think we're going to take a break, though. break Usher. 38-33, AS Tuan lead with five left in the third. The battle continues here in Dakar. AS Tuan, home team up against Stad Malian. It's a five-point difference between these two neighbours of West Africa. And Alkali and Dor to Crawford. Crawford with a big long-range shot. It comes off the metal and uh, doesn't sink. Picked up on the other side. Caters back on the floor. And Amayo trying to, trying to get past Undor. A little bit tricky. Keita, Makan Keita it is. And a, a turn and an attempt from Barry. Barry tries to find his way, trying to wriggle his way between traffic. And it's wrestled down on the ground. A bit of a scramble taking place there. Well, that's been a very interesting battle between Aliu, Par Aliu Diara and Mohamed Pare. And they really have a, a first show resemblance i can tell you most definitely now talking of uh, resemblance we I, i'm resembling something at the moment uh, that we've got a man called q on the other side of the court q give us the latest from those uh, from those timeouts well, I'll just look at that and a chance to go to bobby gay's timeout and what he really was focused in on was getting to try and exploit this foul situation. They're going to look to go inside and they're going to primarily play through Crawford and, and see if he can't get himself to either the free throw line or get execution from a Cherubia or one of the bigs on the interior. Long range shot coming in. It's a beautiful three pointer from Keita. Mamadou Keita from our wise of the suburbs. Well, that's three for four for Mamadou Keita from behind the act can feel the efficiency, he has the hot hand, and they just have to keep giving him that ball. That is stunning. Look at that for a score from, from Mr. Crawford. Brilliant stuff, 40-36. Just when Stad Marley look like they're coming back in, they push ahead. Crawford keeping them at arm's length. Amayo, Keita to Diara. Diara just can't get his range, can't get his hands around and get the target sorted. Crawford. Oh, he's done it again. Crawford with more points to throw onto his pile. He's now up to 90. It's a great performance from Crawford. He's led the way for this S1 side and just giving them the confidence that they need to attack Stade Malier. Tiara picks it up. Tiara! A beautiful dunk, making that statement big time for Stade Malien. Diara just reminding everybody of what he can do on the offensive side, just dropping that dang easy and two points for Stadman. Yeah. But he's still no one into double figures for Stadman. But you can see that uh, that man, Mamadou Keita, up to nine points and showing uh, a real threat offensively. He's not the only one on nine points. We've got uh, there's Diara and Keita, of course, and Berti down there with eight. And looking at uh, Alcali Dur as he goes to the charity line, one of the players who returned to this squad from S1 side that competed in the first ever BAL edition in 2021 in Kigali. Look at that. And, you know, it's, it's a sign of incredible athleticism when you can rise up, use the power, your muscles tighten up as you try and reach up and get out of the thicket, above into the clouds to drain the ball. It, you know, it's, it's not a me it's not easy, Q, is it? Not easy at all, and he's got lots of wingspan to help him do that as well. Wingspan helps. They get the, it's a loss of possession here. Very frustrating. This is Mohamed Barre is the player, and there was a bit of a body movement there as we saw the gesture. Made by Stephanie Barksdale to indicate what she what he did wrong. 
Yeah, the, the screen was moving. It was a moving screen. There's absolutely no way that's not a foul. So good call, but he has four personal fouls and is heading to the bench as Chinielu replaces him. Chimielu. I think I called him Chomche earlier on, but I've, I've got a fascination with the, the BAL Elevate players who are just so, so good. And I think that it's important that we bring out all of the names if we possibly can, even if I get it wrong. So I apologize for that as Crawford goes up for two. Well, absolutely no one blames you, Robbie. It's absolutely forgivable. Thank you so much, Asha. Keita, Keita, it's massive, but it doesn't fall. Chomielu goes looking for it, but it's too fast and it goes out of bounds. 42-38, uh, this is still a very tight tussle. We've got 220 left in the third. It's going to go to the wire, I think, this one, Asha. Just get a feeling that it's going to be tight right until the very end. Here's Duan, need to win this, remember. Stad Marley have got one, and they've lost one. Absolutely, for Ayers Duan to have a chance to go to the playoffs, they'll need to be just at that W today, but also really for the fans who traveled all the way from Dakar to Jemniado, where the Dakar Arena is. Oh, that's a really good charge through into the paint by Keita, but uh, he doesn't manage to finish off what he started. Is Boisi, Boisi just waits for a little bit of support, and he gets it from Crawford, tries to get the ball pass, uh, unable to drop it down. Coming from underneath the basket, basketball ring. And that will be a foul. And it will go against Tamanjan Konate. We're looking at uh, the replay oh. there as Chinelu tries to get the ball from... Sorry, Chinelu, not... Uh, Kunati, you're absolutely spot on. Thank From you, Asha. Jai, yes, but really just looking at uh, Baradjai's impact on the offensive play for S. Duan. He's been in the paint, hustling for every ball on offense, on defense. And that sort of fight is what you expect from a side that is desperate for victory tonight. And as he heads to the line, you can see that he's already scored eight points in this game. He wants to add to that scoreline as Erdogan look to maintain that lead. Eight points, eight rebounds. It's been quite the show for Baran Diaye, who started for Erdogan, the Senegalese champions tonight against Stade Malien. 42-38, and uh, 130 left in the third quarter. Ocherobia tries to use his strength to wrestle the ball, but it's going to be an easy score for Berti with the, the layup unchallenged. And it's a two point game now. It's up to AS Duan to make inroads. They're giving the ball away once again. Keita, Keita. Right, rolls back out, thrown up very quickly. Diop with the, oh, it's put in time, beautifully done. And he needed to come to the rescue there, Samba Fowl. Well, looking at uh, Boisi and how he attacked the, the basket, that's the fearlessness that you need in a game like this one. And Samba Fowl available to clean up two points as Boisi heads to the charity line. It was a beautiful play. One count, though, and uh, two free throws coming from that charity strike. Thanks, Q. We're looking at uh, S. Duan on the free throw line. They're shooting at 45% so far. Not good enough, because when you talk about a free throw line, the re there's a reason why it's called a free throw line. It's free, there's no defense. <laughs> <laughs> and he makes one of two. One of two is better than nothing. It's a turn of Boisi. Boisi goes again. Look at Boisi. Unbelievable score. Massive score that is for Boisi. Gets caught up in the traffic afterwards, but straight back up onto his feet. And they got a five point lead from that at a crucial time in the game. He has it for the ball. He got it. He made it count on the other side alone. And that's what. 
you want from uh, your point guard. Ocherovia doing really well to get that out. Long range shot doesn't happen. A good rebound and a great rebound coming in from, from Brian Amanning. And a seven point lead. And it's all opened up. Berti tries to drop it in, gets two points. They still got a chance to score. They got to move quickly though. Shot clock down to six seconds. And looking at both teams, S1 have scored 30 points in the main as compared to 26 for Stade Malier. Big game for the front court of both teams. 47 for S2 and 42 for Stade Malier. Break time will be back for the final quarter. Yes, we're back, we're back for what should be an enthralling finale here at the Dakar Arena for this Sahara Conference. Such an important 10 minutes of basketball coming up as uh, A.S. Tuan hold on to a five-point lead against Stad Malian in search of their first victory uh, in their third outing here in the BAL. It is quite the fight that S. Duana put up tonight. They'll be proud of the performance. The fans can agree with that. But it's the last quarter that will determine their fate. They must deliver, they must be focused. And that will be something that perhaps Q heard from Coach Papi's timeout. Well, I was on the other side. Coach Cavacante was really emphasizing his offensive execution. He said nothing about defense. They managed to claw back some offensive rebounds and control the boards better in that third quarter. But here in the fourth, he wants triple penetrations inside the paint. And if they can, just create some shot opportunities along the baseline. But look, look for them to attack the paint hard. Yeah, we will keep our eyes on that. I think that, you know, it's going to be the tail of this fourth quarter uh, because that's the only way that you can actually get your, your win. We've also got players who are in, uh, you know, got three fouls, personal fouls as well, so they've got to be careful in the opening couple of few minutes of this fourth quarter as we see Berti getting the ball out wide, uh, tries to drop it in, a long-range shot coming in, but it's not going to happen. Possession going back, Crawford screaming with joy on the side of the court because he knows that that possession is going to be important for AS1. Uh, talking about possession, Boisi has been incredible on defense every time he's been on the court and giving that energy every time Al Dur is on the bench and let's see how he leads this offensive. That's play. fantastic play from Jean-Jacques Boisi. When he sees a glimmer of a chance of just driving through the paint, he'll take it every time. The acceleration will enable him to put himself into a good attacking position. It's relentless, and you can see that in every decision that he makes. And a big, it's a long-range shot. Poor shot decision, I think, for Berte, because look what's happening at the other end. Oh, there's a third chance, and he picks up possession once again. A little bit lucky there, you can see, with uh, Konate getting it up the other end very swiftly. Ball goes out of play. And they will get possession against Stad Malia. But how crazy was this? You've got to take the points when they come like that. It was really three against one at some point. And looking at how they lost that ball is very reckless from S1. You know, these are, the, these are the points that you've got to take advantage of. And uh, Coach Papi Gay knows that. He knows that so much and he, he, he wants his players to make sure that when they do get into those situations, they make sure the points go up on the scoreboard. Otherwise, you know, they'll pay their price because Stan Marley and are a team that offensively move in quick transition. It is really the second time that Konate has been called for traveling. He needs to really work on his footwork as you see Stan Malier trying to reduce that deficit. Crawford around the outside, Amanek now wide to Diop. Amanek goes up, he's trying to float it over the top, it doesn't happen. There's a good rebound, that is perfectly done. You know Boisi, when he wants to play, he can turn it on. He hits fifth gear big time when he wants. Absolutely incredible, he's the second S run player in double figures. Ten points for him so far, massive performance tonight. And again, it's the, the, the shot. Decisions coming in from uh, Stad Malia, maybe not the right ones. This is going up. Oh, there was a little bit of 
dysfunction when they've got to make sure that they understand what they're doing between each other. Amanek this time finishes it off, but a little bit concerning before, but it doesn't matter. The points are in the bag, that's all that matters. It's a nine point lead that's now moved to 11, and now we're going to take a break with 7.30 left on the clock. AS Twain have just basically made a major statement in scoring some, some, some very important scores. Blassi coming in and just basically charging in and saying, yeah, we're going to move into, into pole position. 53-42, an 11-point lead. AS Twain and this man Amayo on the outside. Tiaras picks it up. He's got it out to Makan Keita. Sissouma with a big shot that comes in. It's been tidied up. Look what Blassi does. Blassi, he's moving. Gets the ball out wide. Diop. And Amaning again showing us what he's capable of doing. That's the a big basket from Amaning. Timely. They needed that to just extend that lead and just get that confidence that they need from uh, that break. We need confidence coming from all directions. Q, have you got? Is there any confidence on the uh, on, on the bench for the uh, Stad Malian? On the Stad Malian bench, they've decided that they're going to try and extend the game by attempting from the perimeter. So what we'll see, I think, is a lot more movement around the outside. They're going to shoot, chase down rebounds, and hope that that's the strategy that's going to work. Uh, we've seen how successful AS21 have been on the other end by getting the ball on the inside. So interesting. What is, what is to come? Cavacante will uh, obviously try and work his magic around the outside, but let's have a look at the game summary here. Uh, the three-pointers haven't been coming in. They haven't been falling, Usher. Yes, they haven't been falling. It's 3 for 16 for AS1 since Crawford almost had a perfect uh, percentage earlier in the first half of this game. But just looking at uh, Stad Mali as well, they've been struggling behind the act. But at this point, it's really driving into that paint and seeing how easy they can get those baskets. And also on the free throw line, but a little bit worrying for as Duan as Amaning picked up his that personal foul. And that could play a huge role in this fixture, but he'll stay on the court as Coach Papi still has trust in him. Ocharavia as well, helping in the paint. A little bit of a, a court press taking place here as the ball comes out, but that just leaves it all open for this AS Duante. Couldn't smash it in there. It was a great opportunity for Ocharobia. And uh, again, we can see the, the quick transition. Look at that. That's the perfect pass. Tries to get it up, and there was a uh, back off the, the boards. A Manning not happy, and Ocharobia not happy either. But of course, they go to the free throw line, and it's a chance for them to extend that advantage. Yeah, absolutely. The London-based pair Having a word there, Amaning and Ocharoba from Ghana and Nigeria, respectively, just showing some bromance. No Jalof Wars there, no Jalof Rice Wars, just two players that are brothers in this AS1 side. But really, it's going to be very key for them to stay focused. There's six minutes to play in the game so far. It's a 12-point game, and every possession matters. Here we go with uh, that man, Makan Keita. Just uh, getting the ball down into the corner, picked up by Parry. Parry's on, of course. And, uh, sorry, Kelvin Amayo. And uh, the ball will get given back to the men in black. Stad Malian, Berte waiting to take the pass. Here they go, Diara, Diara out wide. Sissouma with a chance, it's a long range shot. That's his second attempt at a big three pointer that you talked about, Q, that hasn't fallen. And Boissy picks it up, Crawford's there, and the movement continues. Let's see if they can prize open the Stad Malian defense. Crawford, Crawford into the paint, drops it up. Oh, that's a, a good attempt, but it was just a little bit behind Ocherovia. He couldn't finish it off. Yeah, it was good eyes from uh, Chris Crawford, but it felt short. And seconds in the paint, Aliu Diara has been caught. You can see the shake of the head there, Usher, and you know, these are the little errors that can't seep into your game. You know, they, they push, um, Q, you mentioned, get the ball outside you know as much as possible but when you've got the players coming through they've got to get out you've got to be smart about it these are little errors 
Yes, they've got to get a little bit better at the execution, but it's like there's still five minutes left. There's, there's enough time for them to turn this around, but they've got to they've got to start on the defensive end. Got to start on the defensive end. There's a Manning. A Manning. Oh, it's a beautiful bucket. Look at the flamingo hand at the end. That's where it's going to go. Perfectly shot and a very important score. They're 15 points. They lead. The rhythm of the rhyme here in uh, the Dakar Arena. And uh, Boissy goes down and the elbow goes up and Diara's in a little bit of trouble here. Diara needs to stay focused. He's been frustrated on back-to-back -back positions for Stade Malier. Three seconds on the alley and looking at that replay there, the elbow on Boissy. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, when you... You stretch out your arm, you know that you're being tightly marked, but you're also trying to make your space, but you've got to be aware of who's around you. You know, you can't just go rolling in and, and you know, pretending that it's okay. Right, Q? Absolutely right, Robbie. You, you've been watching a lot of basketball of late, and you, you got the call right. The referees are still deciding whether they want to scale this up, yeah. and I think they're going to call the instant replay trigger. Yeah. Like, Normally in basketball you would say that's his space, but then, the, you know, the elbow kind of went far, Robbie. It's and, and I know you played basketball, Robbie. No, I did. I, I played when I was in school until I realized that I wasn't going to grow up uh, bigger than what I am now. But, I mean, you know, I think that the, the fact is that, you know, when, you, when, you're, when your arm's coming away from your body and it goes back to a certain level, you know, when you've got the ball in your hand, you're, you're holding the ball, that's the problem. If he was defending, your arms can come out, you can broaden, you know, and stretch out your wings, of course. But when you've got the ball in your hand and it goes out, that's where you've got to be a little bit careful because that could be seen as uh, intentional. So we will see now from this interpretation from the replay. Yeah, absolutely. And looking at uh, the Stade Malier players, they're looking at what should be the replay and hoping that the decision goes their way. It's a big call this is because it's not just anybody, it's Ali Udiara, key player for Stad Malian. Talking about uh, key player, he's been incredible on the night. Not exactly what we saw in the last game, but nine points. He's been hustling in the paint. Of course, S1 scouted him. They know he's a danger on defense and on offense. He's also the leading rebounder in the Sahara Conference so far averaging 14.5 rebounds per game but he's been quiet on that front tonight and, and there you have it Robbie they have upgraded the foul call so it's no longer a common foul now ruled unsportsmanlike and that's going to be two shots and possession on Diara yeah that's a that's a big blow isn't it and uh, you know just at a moment where you're going to get yourself into a pretty good position um, they're in possession, they give it away. And uh, we've got all of the information that we need. But uh, here we have Boissy who goes to the free throw line. And, and again, they find themselves in, in a complicated situation, Q. The, the lead is starting to balloon. And this is uh, two quick free throws from Boissy who's been pretty great. They have a chance to take it to 19. And that score now starting to become a real factor with the limited amount of time left. And it will be psychological as well. And, and I think that that will play an important part on how the players can, can deal with this because they're going to fight a little bit more aggressively. Uh, trailing by 17 is not a good place to be with, with so little time left on the clock. So you've got to be smart about how you defend but also how you attack. Yes, it's a very difficult night for Stade Malier as it looks like there's a technical foul on the bench to the Stade Malier players from referee Antonio Bernardo from Angola. And Boisi, who delivered before, is heading to the charity line. Hughes literally sat on the bench, so I'm sure that he can give us some extra insight on this. And that's the correct call, Usher. Got it right the first time. Uh, we call on the bench here, a little bit of descent and referee quick to make the tech call. Good, good work, guys. There's teamwork, isn't it? There's a big giant T to teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, Q, I hope you don't give me a technical foul. <laughs> Never that. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll get you to try out your jumbe experience up with the, with the drummers. <laughs> we'll get you on the talking drums. <laughs> 
Wow. 62-44, five minutes and five seconds remaining here at the Dakar Arena. Amani in possession. Down into the corners, Crawford, Crawford up against Berti. Running out of space and running out of place. And uh, he's been called for the charging offense on that occasion, Crawford. A little bit miffed by that, but let's have a look. There it is, that left shoulder just digging into Berti. It's the right call. Well, it will be interesting how Estran tried to approach the remaining minutes. And on the other side, again, Crawford with another foul in less than 10 seconds. I, I, this is going to get physical. I, you know, all of the all of the arrows point towards a physical finale because frustrated team on one side who want to try and get possession, win, win ball back, and on the on the on the other side, uh, you've obviously got a team who are going to try and you know just um, uh, detonate, you know, or just uh, extract the the venom that's being created within this Stadmalian team. Well, absolutely. And now looking at uh, Chris Crawford, he is the leader on the court for S1. How exactly is he going to lead this team to play out this game? Can they maintain that lead? On the offensive side, they need to run down that clock. On defense, they need to try and stay clear of fouling because they're already in the red right now. Any foul on Sad Malie, and they'll be heading to the free throw line. Berti doing the business from the free throw line. And the, the tussle. And you can see that the, the full court press taking place. There's a lot of uh, man marking taking place. The kind of physical game that Q absolutely adores. And that played so well at it over his, over his years of playing professionally. Umarubia using that body to churn and spin. But uh, there is a Diara foul that's been committed and this is putting him in trouble he's on four now well talking about uh a new diara it's a mismatch for Chiroiba. he can feel it once he puts his body on a new diara and he's forced you know to move and that movement is what is the foul for a new diara and danger for Stade Malier. Four fouls for one of their best players, one of their starters who's been very key in their campaign so far at the Sahara Conference in their debut season in the BAL. But it looks like he's a man who knows how to handle himself, Ali Diara. Yeah, Q, how important is it for Biggs to have elbow grease? And if you don't get that elbow grease, you can't move around and it makes you really frustrated, right? Elbow grease, you, you just need to make sure that, that you spend some time in the weight room as well. It's the ability to handle the contact, especially with this physicality that we're seeing, very, very important. And, and this is every, every phase that we're actually seeing now is turning into a bit of a wrestling match, which is quite apt because, of course, Senegal, uh, we've got some wonderful uh, uh, you know, wrestlers here in this country. They are the best in the world. Uh, but, but the fact is that you know, this is really, really important to be able to deal with the defensive game and just not give away uh, the points or the, the, the free throw shots and the fouls because we've got to a critical time. And you've just got to be smart on how you deal with it. Yeah, absolutely. Look at uh, Paco, the famous Paco. Senegalese fan, number one fan of Senegal. He just arrived from Egypt where he was cheering Senegal yeah, at the, the Africa Cup of Nations under 20. They won gold. Perhaps he was the reason they won gold, Bobby. <laughs> But he goes to every Senegal game, doesn't he? And that hat is just as famous as Paco. It's like, you know, everybody knows who it belongs to. You won't see a hat like that anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Here it is, Otoroya! Oh, beautifully done! Takes a long pass and makes sure that that is drained in a big way. And a big statement there for AS Tuan, extending their lead once again. They got a 20-point lead, first time they've hit the 20-point mark. Four minutes to go. And, uh, as Berti drops it in, and a fine score coming in from Chimielo. Chimielo is uh, one of uh, the players that have really capitalized at the BAL, and he brings that threat in the paint. 
Amaneng, Amaneng doing really well. That's a really fine score. The big man using that body, goes left, goes right, decides to do a, a little spin, and then afterwards just drops it in. Sumptuous stuff. Sushoma with a chance to try and drop in a big long range shot. Crawford's there again, taking the ball up into enemy territory. And looking at what Crawford is trying to do, run down the clock. Chirobia working really hard, unable to get the ball. He wins, he gets it back, and that's flying left, right, and center. And Diop makes it safe. Boisi says, let's calm down a little bit. Shot clock back to 14, and he goes on a bit of a wander, runs into trouble, gets the pass out wide. Nicely done with Crawford, but he can't make the right pass. At the other end, surely this is going to be an easy drop in there by that man, Berte. Uh, but still, there's a big, big lead taking place with 2.50 to go. It's 68 to 50. Well, 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 Asher. I think that uh, I think Crawford making making doing some really, really interesting uh, plays, and uh, he's keeping this AS Duan team really clicking. They're working quite well together, and they're making sure that they, you know it's it's complicated for Stad Malian, and then defensively. They're holding four to the back. Stad Malian unable to drop those shots in. Yes, absolutely. Talking about uh, Chris Crawford, he's been a leader tonight. Looking at that nice assist to Ochareva in the paint. Marcus Crawford, he's been incredible for S1. Yes, the figures show that he is 19 points on the board, and especially on a night where we don't have Terrell Stoglin who's the one player that has scored the most points in the history of the BAL, 40 points in a single game. But Crawford, 19 points, three assists, two blocks, big night. Such a performance for a player of his caliber is what S1 need. And now they're two minutes, 50 seconds away from what could be their first victory, the Senegalese champions. And it's important, of course, for the home team here in Senegal to get make their mark to actually uh, to say right guys we're here we're actually we're going to get them get ourselves into this BAL this third season and we're going to we're going to fight for a place in Kigali in the playoffs the top four of six go through and they will be joined by the top four of six in the Nile Conference which will take place in Cairo next month. Well, absolutely talking about Cairo, some of the players here have indicated that Egypt is one of their destinations that they would love to visit. But first, they have some work to do in the Sahara Conference. That was the charge through coming from Matthew Bryan and Manning. And is that Berti? No, it's not, sorry. It's um, Chinyalu who comes across, and Chinyalu picks up his third foul. And Manning will go to the free throw line. And again, it's just a uh, clock's ticking away, but it's stop start at the moment. It's not really having a major effect on AS Duan and uh, their focus on what they're trying to do here tonight. Yeah, AS Duan have been very consistent right from the first quarter, backed by the fans who've come in huge numbers to support them. And they can smell the victory, they can see it, they can smell it. Can they touch it? Well, let's see if the, the Senegality style will enable them to battle through into their first victory tonight. 68-50. And the free throws. Oh, it's a beautiful effort. Beautiful shot coming in down that, on that far side there. Very important from Traore. Crawford, and an easy dunk there. Taken well by Michael Ocherovia. Ocherovia just having a great night tonight for S1, the former University of Western Illinois student, just having fan down here in Senegal, introducing himself to African basketball. Nicely done, Konate. There he is, Chinello. Chinello tries to rise up. Uh, the foul has been committed. Looks like it's uh, a Manning who gets in the way. Looking at uh, the assist from Crawford to Ocheroiva on the other end of the court. Good performance 
great distribution, good eyes from Crawford on a night that he'll be very proud of his own individual performance, but also of his teammates if they go on to win. Chiniello, Chiniello drops in, just his points, goes up on the scoreboard. 70-54, they give the ball back away, Keita, Keita, this is an easy score normally for Kanate, does the business there beautifully, and it does drop, and they go again. Good attitude from uh, Stade Malier, who are now playing uh, full court press on S1, of course they know S1 want to run down the clock and waste time, and you can't blame them, Robbie. No, it's a mid-range two for Chris Crawford, beautifully done. He gets into the, past the 20 point barrier, 21 points for the American. 21 points for the man who's been perfect on the free throw line in a performance that has been incredible. Well, a little bit of uh, the greasy hands just enables Mohamed Parry to get himself points. He's on four fouls, but it doesn't matter because he's coming on for the last couple of minutes. Crawford gets the ball out to Endor. Endor's been slick as well, good distribution. When Boissy hasn't been on, on the floor, he's been just uh, playing some really good basketball, good distribution, and they go again. There's a, the attempt at the reversed layup, but finally it's put in perfectly by Mamadou Diop. Great backup there from Mamadou Diop to clean up. Well committed. And uh, free throw line up, we will go. 42.6 seconds, that's a 15 foul. And we'll go and hear from Q now. Q, what's um, I think it's just uh, it's running out the last few seconds, right? I think they they've got it, they've got to just basically accept the fact that that it's over. And there's Crawford. Just uh, with a little replay there. Yeah, over to you, Q. Well, really just a, a good performance here by Chris Crawford in an individual capacity. They've done something a little bit different. Their points in the paint uh, are up to 44 points now as they continue to punt the ball inside. I think it's been a primary difference in a performance from this AS to one team. Stad Malian were, were well matched inside the paint is where their strength lies. And I think that was the, the primary difference in what we saw from the home team. Thank you, Q7458. And we'll get the reaction from Chris Crawford uh, at the end of this game. As logically, it's all about AS1 getting their first victory. And Crawford standing up and saying, I'm here. And I'll take these. I'll, I'll help the Senegalese team try and get through this Sahara Conference. Scramble on the ground. It's all good. Parry up against Andor. 31.3 seconds remaining, Stan Marlian get possession back. Uh, this uh, is quite interesting now, Asha, because it has shaken things up a little bit. We now have A.S. Duan, who are going to be in the mix with a, with a win. Stan Marlian, who got a win. Quarrel Falcons without a win, but they'll be going for one tomorrow. It's all looking very interesting and entertaining. Lots of drama here in Dakar. Yes, and we came for the drama, and drama it is. We thank A.S. Duan for bringing that up and just making this one interesting, the Sahara Conference, but also really for the home fans who've been coming out from Dakar to Jamniado, which is the neighborhood where the Dakar Arena is. It's a big night for the Senegalese champions. A big night indeed, and uh, Papi Gay and AS2 celebrate their first victory here in the Sahara Conference, 74. 58 the final score. Congratulations, the Jumbies. Well, they're making a lot of rhythm and rhyme. There's a lot of happy people here tonight because yeah, a team's got off the mark and they've most importantly not stopped an important victory that will just put them in a good place before their next couple of games that they've got to play in their quest to, to qualify for the playoffs in Kigali. Well, for the third game of a BAL season, Sahara Conference played here in Dakar, a Senegalese champion has come alive and registered their first victory. Last year, it was Duke against Reg. This year, it is S1 against Stade Malier. And you can see what this means for the Senegalese champions. Diaye celebrating 
and high-fiving. Chris fans. Crawford with 21 points is about to be joined by Quinn Q uh, for a little interview. So uh, let's oh. go across to Q and join the MVP. Thank you very much, Robbie. Courtside with the MVP, Chris Crawford. 21 points, four rebounds, four assists, but I think more importantly, the win. What was different today for you? Uh, just trying to come out here and have more energy than we had in the first two games. I'm just proud of my guys. We came out, executed the plan, and got a win for the Senegal, for the Senegalese fans. I'm just ha happy about that. It looked like it was a different point of emphasis. You try to push the ball inside. Is that fair? Is that, is that a strategy that worked? Yeah, just try to keep pressure on the defense and just trying to keep attacking to make plays for my teammates. You know, you're going to need your whole team to win a game, so just trying to do my best at that. What does this win mean for you and for the team, and how, how important was it? Uh, it's everything for the team, for the fans here. We just want them to keep coming out every game, supporting us, and we got another game tomorrow. Hopefully we can come out here and pack it out again and get a win for them. Congratulations. Great performance today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Q. Well, there we have it, Marcus Crawford. Chris Crawford, the man who's managed to up his game from the last outing, 21 points to 15, 36% from field goals. Uh, the assists, four, um, and a couple of steals, but nine points uh, scored from the three-point range, and that is a, a solid game, fast improvement. He stepped it up, Paco's happy, the hat's looking great. And the Senegalese fans have got lots of rhythm and rhyme, Asha. It's a good scenario as we take a look at the game stats. Yeah, looking at uh, the game stats, Bran Amani with 14 points, six rebounds. Jean-Jacques Boissy, 13 points and four rebounds. He was incredible. Barajai starting under five players for S1, eight points, eight rebounds, and Ocheroibi, eight points, seven rebounds. On the other side for Stade Malier, Suleiman Berth again in double figures, 17 points, but really that was not enough to help the Malian champions to pick their second victory at this Sahara Conference. Here we go then, this is the final score, as you can see in the field goal percentage, AS Tuan just keeping it at 40%, and uh, the assists, 16 to 15 steals, Stad Marlion with one more um, and level on the three points. Expected a few more from from falling from outside the D, but it didn't happen. Um, it, a lot of it was scored from the inside. Uh, this is what it happens following that victory. Here's Tuan move up to fourth position uh, because of that win over Stad Marlion uh, with ABC Fighters from their win over US Monastir earlier today. Moving into second place, Regatop, they've already qualified. The battle is on. Quara Falcons will play AS Tuan tomorrow. That's the late game with Stad Malian again up against Reg. It's going to be tough for them, but they'll be fight, fighting big time. And coach Kaba Kante will want to get a win against Reg. We'll have to see what happens. Lots of shenanigans, lots of drama to unfold tomorrow. Asha, Q, thank you so much. And we will see you tomorrow.